Okay, everybody, here is your video. Uh, I like to do a, a video on the homework in every chapter, uh, which is, I always did that when we had the live class to make sure everyone knew uh, what they should be thinking about in doing the homework. And of course, the, the exams are based on the homework, so this is more than just helpful on the homework. Now, first of all, this is the uh, homework sheet that I've typed up. You may notice here that it says do question mark. I'm still working on that part right now. So, so uh, these videos are being done before I've actually finalized data and so forth but I know I'm going to assign the homework in chapter one so let's go over the homework in chapter one and uh, what I did here was uh, there's a there's a lot of information in some of these homework things I put in in red uh, how many points each piece was worth for example on 3a in chapter one which is going to be right here uh, there we go here 3a when you're doing the homework, I, 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 this evolved over the years as I taught econometrics. I started thinking, when I was doing the assignment, I'd like to know ahead of time how much 3A is going to be worth relative to 5A, relative to 5B, and so forth. It says somewhere up in the description that those are approximations. And that's in case as I'm looking at it, I think to myself, ah, that ought to be worth, you know, a million. <laughs> no, not that. Uh, but I, I've been teaching it so many times now that I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that will stick to exactly what it has on here. So, 3A. What does 3A ask? This is a great question. Uh, and this is going to emphasize something for that we need to think about for the rest of the semester. Um, and uh, let me show you here. The dog has decided to plant himself right in front of the camera, which is very inconvenient. All right, 3A. 3A, all it says is, carefully write out the exact meaning of the coefficient uh, of L uh, sub I. All right, and this here is, uh, let's see, what was P? The percentage of putts made, and uh, L was the uh, number of feet that the, that the uh, putt was, all right? And so this is something that this book emphasizes quite appropriately that other books do not necessarily do. And it is uh, one of the things that I've mentioned in the, in the lecture videos about uh, this book is how it was praised by an economist who spends a lot of her career criticizing how economists don't do econometrics very well. And this is where she's coming from. And this is, this is what this book does well. Um, and, and this will make more sense later as we get into later chapters. But a lot of times, an economist would have run this regression and come up with, you know, P equals 83.6 minus 4.1. And they would have checked the statistical significance of, of the negative 4.1. You know, uh, how likely is it that we came up with that by chance? And that's really all they would discuss it. They wouldn't really discuss it 4.1 what? I mean, what, what if you got a, a highly statistically significant number uh, on how many, the, the impact of the number of hours a student studied on their grade, right? highly statistically significant, and what it indicated to you was that on a 100 point exam, for every hour someone uh, studies, they increase their grade by .000001 points. Now, would it make sense to focus on the statistical significance of that, or would it instead be a good idea to say, well, it was statistically significant, but what it's saying here is that studying has next to nothing to do with your grade. I mean, it's statistically significant amount by which it increases your grade, but the amount by which it increases your grade is infinitesimal compared to the overall exam grade. So you want to stop and say in very clear terms, 4.1 what? Uh, and what do you want to do? You want to word it this way. That negative 4.1 means, and, and let me word it in a very uh, um, broad way here that is not going to be, uh, that is not going to give me full credit on the answer, but I want to start off here. Um, and that is, for every one unit increase in L, you get a 4.1 unit decrease in P. Now that's quite right, that's true what I just said. For every one unit increase in L, you get a 4.1 unit decrease in P. The trick to this homework is to say what I just said, but substitute the actual measurements for the units. Uh, let me give you an example here. Huh, I changed 29 files on Dropbox, thank you. Just pointed that out. Alright, let's see. Grade is equal to 14 plus 5 times hours, all right? Uh, let's say this is the regression I have run, and I, I came up with that, you know, of course I'm using this example all semester long because I know you all be familiar with it. Um, then, 
grade equals grade in points on 100 point exam, hours equals number of hours student I studied for this test. Sabai, sabai. Okay. So, I've got my units of measure specified there. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, it's a, it's a pain in the neck to, to um, what's the word I'm after here, document stuff like that. But it is so important to see a write out. By the way, grade equals, by the way, hours equals, and to be very specific about it, right? So, what does my five mean? It means that for every extra hour, and notice how specific I'm going to be about, about this. For every extra hour a student studies for this test, they are going to increase their um, grade on the 100 point exam by five points. I'm going to be very specific about all those elements right there. So let's look back at this homework. I'm not, I don't want to answer it for you, but I, want to, I also don't want to trick you. You're going to have to look up in the description. Let's see, this way. You have to look up in the description for the measurements. Uh, percentage of putts made and a, the length of the putt in feet. All right, this is actually going to be a pretty uh, simple one because they haven't given you some really complex measurements. Uh, but you want to say in those terms, in terms of um, the length of the putt in feet. Don't just say length of the putt. Length of the putt in feet and the percentage of putts made. All right, so that's really important for the rest of the semester and a number of the early homeworks are just making you do that. Oh, I just noticed that that light down there is kind of annoying when that, okay. Um, all right, so that was uh, 3A, 5A, all right? Well, 5A, and I'm gonna turn this light back on because I'm gonna get in front here and talk again. Uh, 5A is the same thing, all right? State the economic meaning of coefficients y and g. Now, there's one extra thing you have to do on this one, but state the economic uh, meaning of coefficients y and g. They're really, he's really asking you to do the same thing you just did on 3a. Just tell me specifically, in terms of those units right there, uh, what the beta sub 1 means and what the beta sub 2 means. But notice he has a hint there. Remember to hold the impact of the other variable constant. Okay. Let's go back to this grade in hours. Let's see, plus uh, three times attendance percentage, and I'm going to write down here, attendance percentage equals percent of classes student I attended attended, oh good lord, John, I just misspelled attended, attend, I'm trying to hurry, it's a problem, attended uh, before exam. All right, so now, what I have to do, when I explain the five on hours, I have to add a little bit on there. I have to say uh, that the five means that for every additional hour a student studies for this test, they raise their grade on a 500 point exam by five points Holding the impact of attendance constant. Holding the impact of attendance constant. You gotta add that last bit. When there's more than one variable, when there's more than one explanatory variable, you have to add the holding, or if there's, if there's 10 of the variables, holding the impact of all the other variables constant. All right, uh, that's very important. Uh, it seems a little tedious at first, but I'm telling you, uh, I, I have seen some really crappy econometrics and they are not careful about things like that. All right, so let's see, what have we got next? We've got uh, 5B as in boy. Where are we? Oh, here we are, 5B. This is a nice one here. 5B says, if we were to actually estimate that equation, what would you expect the signs on the coefficients of y and g to be? Going to be a lot of that coming up uh, from, uh, in subsequent chapters. Uh, that's an easy one. And then on part D, where are we here? There we are. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The authors measured G as a decimal. So if a state had a 10% growth in enrollment, yada, yada, yada. All right. Uh, so he, they want you to tell what G, how G would have been described in different units of measure. 
Okay, uh, and, and, and in particular, they want you to tell how the coefficient would have changed. What if I had no signal? Yeah, I'll have to wake it up in a minute. What if I had uh, measured the hours of study as minutes of study? All right. Now, you know there's going to be a 60 in there somewhere, right? Uh, so you have to decide. Let's see now. Um, if, I, if I would have measured this as minutes of study, would the 5 become 5 times 60 or 5 divided by 60? All right. So if, if, the, if the units I'm using in that hours is instead minutes, then uh, would I be multiplying by 60 or dividing by 60? Well, here's the deal. Uh, first of all, I mean, you think about it kind of logically, really. Uh, is one minute of study going to increase your grade by five percentage points or by a lot less than five percentage points if this is our equation? Well, by a lot less, right? So this must be, if we put in minutes instead, five over 60 or one over 12. It would have been five over 60 instead. That's what they're after in that last question there. Let me wake up the computer here. That's what they're after in that last one. They want you to change the units, and they want you to tell uh, how it would have been measured instead. Why aren't you waking up here, computer? Ooh, uh, with the coronavirus thing, um, the university froze people getting updated computers. Man, I'm glad I got mine last year uh, because my computer really sucked last year. Uh, the one I had from before, this one's a really great one. Okay, so that was 5D. All right, number seven. Let's see if we got here on number seven. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Okay, number seven is very much like the ones we've already done here. Uh, and that's, you know, it's about all we can do in chapter one is, is stuff like this, but it's still very, very important. Um, on number seven, we have a regression here on wage as a function of, of experience, education, and gender, right? And uh, it's going to ask you, what is beta sub 2? And you're just doing the exact same thing you just did on, uh, let's see, was this it? No, previous page. Here it is. You're doing the exact same thing you did over here. For a five unit, you know, for a 15 point increase in, you know, uh, uh, inches per yard, uh, then you get, you know. So you're basically going through once again and describing in very specific terms uh, the impact of beta sub 2. And what we get here? Education. All right. So the years of education. So for every additional year of education beyond high school, um, the eighth worker earns. And then you say in... Um, now, they haven't been specific about how wage is measured, have they? Well, that's good for you. That makes it easier. All right. Um, so, uh, let's see here. I assume it's a dot. Well, maybe it says here. Oh, it says back in uh, section 1.2 how they measured it. I'll bet it's just in dollars. Here it is. Single equation, linear, stochastic error term. Extending the notation. No, that's height and weight. Here, here it is. Here it is. Uh, wage. Let me find this for you so you don't have to look it up. It just says wage. All right, so I, I assume it's dollars. All right, let's just assume it's dollars. Um, all right, and then the exact same thing on part B. You also have to do B. You have to do 7A, B, and C. B is the same sort of thing again. Now, don't forget to say holding uh, the impact of all the other variables constant. There, I've given away some free points. And then last, it has an interesting question. I thought that's why I assigned it. Um, what if you were going to add a dummy variable to represent the potential for discrimination against people of color? How would you define such a variable? Be specific. So you just look back at the one for gender and look at that and then figure out analogously how you would do that for uh, people of color. Okay, and that's all of chapter one. So I will now work on, actually I'm now going to work on having dinner, and then I'm going to work on a little video for the homework in chapter two.